Morning. Thanks, Ted. Uh, it was a lovely introduction. Uh, for those of you that uh, didn't catch on, my partner, uh, Melda Grant, is the uh, is the chief Fleming herder, which makes me the de facto chief Fleming. Um, so today, what I want to talk about was hyperlocal marketing. And if you give me a sec, I'm just going to do a quick screen share here, and we will get rolling. All right. Can everyone see my screen? You can. Excellent. All right. So hyperlocal marketing, um, this used to be in the uh, realm of, of bigger companies only, but it's now possible that for you to use the same thing that big companies can do in a small business uh, and be able to really dial down who you are going to be talking to uh, in your local market. Um, presentation takes about 10 minutes, so it's pretty quick. And if you have any questions at the end, I will answer them when we get there. So, so uh, the question has always been, how can you market your business to specific people based on their behavior and where they live? Um, it's always been either one or the other. So if you did, uh, if you went onto Facebook, you could target them by things that they did or groups they were in or anything else. Or if you went to like a community newspaper, you could you could show your ads to people in your local area. But it was really hard to put the two together. Um, so the example I like to use is a landscaping company. If you were a landscaper. How could you find, for example, these three people, if you knew that they had all visited a garden center in the last 12 months, had a family income of $150,000 or greater, and they lived in an area where there was a lot of new construction, so new homes where um, when you move in, your yard is mud and you have to, you have to do your landscape. Now, if you could do that, could you use that information and entice them to get a quote from your landscape company? Well, chances are the odds would be very good. So the, uh, the question is, how would you do that? And the, uh, uh, the, the one thing that we have to realize is, if you look at everyone in this picture, what is the one thing that all of them will have in common? And the answer obviously is that probably every one of them has a smartphone. Um, you will get a few holdouts that won't have one, um, particularly someone like my dad, who he used a flip phone his whole life, and you couldn't get him to switch. But you know, he, he's the outlier. He is definitely not not the majority. Um, almost everyone now has a smartphone, and most of them have a relatively new, recent one, which has got a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff on it. But what does this allow you to do? Well, you may not realize that um, when you have a smartphone, you're being tracked. Your smartphone is transmitting its location. 20, pretty much 24 seven, depending on the apps that you're running. Um, so how does it do this? Well, it monitors where you are based on signal towers. So if, if it's if you're reading off three towers, it'll be triangulating roughly where you are. Um, there is a system called MC, which uses the um, the SIM card on your phone. Um, if you're using Wi Fi or Bluetooth, so if you're in a in a building and you're on SHA open, they have a really good idea of where you are because of the range of the Wi Fi. Um, and then there are certain apps that will um, capture data and they will record it. So, for example, if you're like on if you're in a, in a weather app, the weather app is going to want to know where you are, because it's if you're in if you're in Calgary, you're not going to want the weather for Toronto, you're going to want the weather for Calgary. So it's going to have to know your your, uh, your location and same with any kind of mapping program. So if you're on Google Maps and you want to know how to get from where you are to a particular store, the fact that it needs to know where you are so that it can create the map means that your phone is now transmitting its data. So that GPS data is going all the time. The interesting thing that most people don't know about GPS data is it's tracked to the individual phone, not to you. And that's for privacy reasons. So I have two phones. I have a, an Apple and I have an Android. Both of them have a thing called a MAC address. Um, MAC address is, is like a digital serial number that is unique to every device. Um, so I've listed mine up here. So if you ever want to send me a message, you can now do that using those MAC addresses. Um, the interesting thing about MAC addresses is if you figure it out, there are actually 281 trillion unique MAC addresses. So they're not in any, any chance of running out anytime soon. But what does this all mean? If you ever wondered if it's possible to, you know, if, if this is really true, are they really tracking us? So um, I ran across this um, a while ago in Wired magazine, and it was about a, uh, a fellow named Simon Weckert in Berlin, 
And he ran a little experiment, and you can see in the picture where he's towing a little red wagon. The wagon had 99 smartphones in it, and he, on Google Maps, created a traffic jam. Although you can see there is actually no one on the street. So if you ever had any doubts of, of this, um, if you go into Google and just type in an artist used 99 phones to fake a Google Maps traffic jam, it'll take you right to the Wired article. You can read it. Um, it's actually pretty funny. And uh, uh, Google has been working to get rid of little quirks like this, but it, it does prove unequivocally they are tracking where our phones are going. So what is hyper-local marketing? So hyper-local marketing is using the data that is recorded because all these all all of your phone's pings where it's telling you where it is is recorded and we can use that data and we can we can go back in time 12 months so i can say to one of the data companies give me everyone who has gone into a home depot in southern alberta in the past 12 months that data is available so not i don't know who they are but i know what phones they are and because we keep our phones with this all the time i'm Got pretty high confidence that if I want to show an ad to anyone that's been at Home Depot in Southern Alberta in the last 12 months, I can put an ad on your phone. The idea behind Hyperlocal is it allows you to take behavior that is going to best um, mimic your ideal customer, client, patient, whatever it is, and the demographics that fit them. So we can create a list of physical locations where your ideal customers visit or where they live. Um, so for example, if, um, if I was an auto repair shop, I would want to target people that have been in a service department of a dealership within five miles of me in the past 12 months. Those would be pretty good, pretty good contacts. Alternatively, if I was in a community, I could now only show my ads to that community or I could do an overlay of both. So you, you've got some options here. Um, I can do an overlay of you know, how old their vehicle is, what their income is, whether they're male or female. So a whole bunch of things. So literally what we're doing is we're taking all this information and we are uh, in, in the example that you're seeing here is, I'm, is we've targeted multiple other businesses that would be would have the same customers we would have. And then you would um, put a radius around each one as to you know, how far in and you can dial that up or down. Um, and then you say, you know, who are these people and, and show them my ads because they're probably a pretty good match for me. So there's, there's two types of, of additional information you, lay, you can lay over top besides the actual physical, like where are they? You can do demographic information and you can do psychographic information. So demographic are things like um, they are, they live in Calgary. They are professional. They have a, um, a bachelor's MBA PhD. Um, they have this much income. They have this many children. Um, they own two cars. They own their home. This is all demographic information. You can also start to lay across psychographic information based on what they do. So you can say, if someone has been to these fine food restaurants, you can fairly safely assume that they enjoy fine dining. So now we're getting into the psychographics. What is it that makes them tick? Um, what are things they like? If they go to, uh, to an NHL hockey game and they go to a professional football game and they can go to a basketball game, you can fairly safely assume that psychographically these people are sports fans. Um, same if they, if they are you know, hunters or whatever, whatever, whatever you want to put in there, you can do that. Um, the third party providers that provide this, some of them you would, these, you would have heard of, you know, Com, uh, Comscore, Double Verify, uh, you may not have heard of Grapeshot, I'm sure you've all heard of Oracle. Um, these are the big companies that hold all this data. Um, it's available, you just have to know how to access it. The other thing you'll probably notice down on the bottom, I put, if you want the slides for this, um, write this down, just text the word hyper. And you want to text the word hyper to uh, our phone number, which is 587-807-6750. And you can, you'll be asked for your name and your email, and you, we'll send you all the slides. Um, I do know I tend to be fairly quick, so this way you've got everything here. So once you've got that information, what do you do with it? Well, there's a couple things you have to do first. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create multiple sets of ads. Now, this is one ad set 
in multiple sizes. And you'll see the size is 300 by 250, 250 by 250. Uh, there's banners that are 468, but there's vertical ones, which are, which are um, skyscrapers. The reason they do that is because the, the, depending on the app or the website, you're going to need different sizes. So for example, the one on the right, uh, this is inside the weather network app itself. So this is not a website, this is inside the app. And you can see this is a fairly thin narrow banner because that's the space that the weather network gives us to put the ad in. So we have to make one to fit there. Um, the one that I'm looking at right now, that's probably a 300 by 50. On the other side, you'll see this is now on a website. And this is the Toronto Sun website. There's an article that's going on here. And you can see that this ad is now more rectangular. So this is a probably a 300 by 250. And we provide different ads and you want to provide different, not only different sizes, you want to provide different ad sets. And the reason is you never know exactly what it is that somebody's going to click. You can guess, but it's never exact. So if you were a, uh, I'll just pull one out of the air here. So if you were a, uh, a liquor store, for example, you might have one set of ads that are best deals on whiskey, another set that's best deals on vodka, another set that's best deals on scotch, best deals on beer, and best deals on tequila. Then at the end of the month, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at all five of those ad sets. You're gonna see which one converted the best. You're also gonna look for the one that converted the worst. So for example, let's say tequila didn't, didn't convert very well. Then what we're probably gonna do is we're gonna take tequila off and we're gonna put gin in. Because it's not what we think we wanna sell, it's what your clients wanna sell. So you're, you're always using that data to hone your ads. You're gonna to drive to a page that, is gonna, that will probably give them the option of saying, which one of these five did you, are you most interested in? And then they pick and they, they go, go from there. The key to all this is, is thinking through your whole process ahead of time. So that means determining the days and times that you want your ads to display. Um, you want to determine what your budget is. So budgets are determined on CPM. So CPM is cost per thousand. Um, our most popular package that we have is 600 bucks. That one shows your ad 20,000 times a month minimum. Uh, you'll see a little plus there. And it's five sets of ads. We have them, you can, you can do hyper-marketing for literally a couple hundred bucks if you, if you want to kind of do a bare bone start just to test it out. Um, if you're doing a larger area, for example, if you were doing uh, a demographic area that have 5 million people in it, um, you realistically could spend a lot more than $600 because you've got so many more people to draw from depending on whether you can handle it. So you wouldn't want to, uh, you wouldn't want to hammer 6 million people if you can only handle 10 people a month because you might get overwhelmed. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is when I was talking about demographics, the tighter you narrow that down, um, your CPM cost is going to go up because you're dealing with a more specific audience and each overlay has an additional cost to it. Um, so if you wanted, um, uh, let's say orthodontists in North America that made a quarter million dollars or more, drove Jaguars, uh, owned, their, owned and lived in their own home and had rental houses. That list of that is, is available, but because it's going to be a fairly small list, it's going to get fairly expensive. So you, you, you always want to balance between um, what you're paying versus how narrow you're getting. It's also important to realize that if you narrow it down too much, you now if I said that same list that they drive purple Jaguars, um, that list is going to get so small that it's now going to create a privacy problem. You will not be able to get that list because it's now getting too narrow and it allows you to, um, to start identifying certain people. And that's, that, that does not meet the privacy laws. Um, important to realize that the landing page, which is, so when you, when you have a banner, you're obviously clicking to go to a certain place. Um, most of the time you can also do click to call, but typically you're going to drive to a web page. So it's, it's very, it's critical that the landing page that you're driving to has the same, it, it, it matches the ad. So if the ad, let's use dentist. So if your ad says um, best price on dental implants, and you drive them to a home page, and the moment they get there, there's a banner ad on top of that, or the page is talking about um, children's dentistry. There's a complete disconnect between the ad and the home page. That person is gonna bounce, that one's lost. You always have to make sure that that whatever your ad is saying, the landing page matches. So it, it, we'll call it, it has to have the same smell. So as long as you do that, you're good. Um, retargeting is optional, uh, but highly recommended. You've probably heard a lot about 
um, the privacy with Apple and the different things, you know, they're, they're eliminating cookies and everything else. Um, Hyperloop is a little different. We're not using a cookie on the software in order to track them. We are using the MAC address. It's a completely different system. It means we can retarget using these, um, which is really kind of cool. Uh, so everything that Apple does does not. So if we get someone that's clicking on their ad, we can now start showing them more of the same ads. The reason that it does that is because you're, for example, if you were looking at an ad on your desktop, you're using an IP address, which tends to be fairly static. It doesn't change a lot. The issue with mobile in the reason we use a MAC address and not an IP address is because if you think about if you're if you are um, if you're a passenger in a car and you're on your phone and the car is moving your phone has to have the ability to jump from tower to tower to tower and that's why they use a MAC address and not the IP address because the the system has to be able to figure out where your phone is and send the data to your phone not someone else's while you're moving um, and that makes that makes the system really really interesting. So, will hyperlocal work for you? Um, for some businesses, yes. Uh, for some businesses, no. Uh, if you run a um, a fast food restaurant, I would say this is probably not a good fit. Um, mostly because uh, fast food tends to be very um, very. I want it now. It's not, I'm, I'm going to think about having a cheeseburger in three days. That, that People don't think like that. It's like, I'm hungry now, what's close? In a case like that, hyperlocal is definitely not the right media. However, if you have a very high-end restaurant where in a certain, and you want to have people from a certain affluent area come to your restaurant, try it out, that would work beautifully. Um, same thing if you are a, uh, if you're a local dentist, you, you know, you want to show your ads within probably your community, maybe a little bit outside so you could, um, you know, pick areas that make sense. You would place your ads only in there. Um, you know, if, if you think about, you know, the, the saying about growing up on the wrong side of the tracks, you want to show your ad on the wealthy side of the tracks, but not the less affluent side of the side of the tracks. And that is 100% possible using um, hyperlocal. But if you're not sure, um, uh, Ted has put my uh, my appointment, my calendar link into the chat. Just uh, give me a call. It's, you know, I, I, I'm happy to give you a 15 minute call. Uh, honestly, I, I, until we have the call, I have no idea whether it would work for you or not. And, and if not, you know, there's no cost for the call. There's no obligation. I'm, as you can tell, I wear a Hawaiian shirt. I'm not a high pressure kind of guy. Um, and yeah, so let's see if uh, Ted, are there any questions? Uh, okay, so five ninety. Yeah, so five ninety seven is not the only package. That's our most popular one. Uh, as I mentioned, we've done packages. You can do you can do something for as low as a couple hundred bucks a month without any problem. Um, we've got some that run you know into the almost tens of thousands a month. Uh, biggest thing, just um, again, click the link, get, um, get the uh, get the link to give me a call and and let's set up a time and chat and we'll we'll figure out something that works for you. Uh, would this work for power sports? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, if you think about the power sports business, so you can do things that you would target recreational areas. Um, like I would, I would be targeting uh, lake, popular lakes, boat launches. Uh, if you're doing uh, uh, ATVs, I'd be, you know, putting the targeting trails, that kind of thing. So absolutely, that could work really well for there. Uh, dentist. Okay, so um, yeah, we do not. Um, we we. We only put one client in per trading area. So uh, if you're a dentist and there's another dental office right across the street, if you're a client, we would turn them away. Um, that's just a, uh, uh, a way we do things. So, uh, yeah, and that's about it. The rest of it. So, again, if you have any questions or anything else, um, easiest way, just schedule a call with me. And uh, thanks for watching. And I will turn this back over to Ted.